Hey everyone, I'm Chuck Carter, lead pastor of Family Church here in Central Florida. And man, we're so happy you've joined us for episode three of the Family Church podcast. As always, I'm here with... And I'm Philippe Mendes, online pastor for Family Church. We believe that the local church is the hope of the world. And we have a passion to equip leaders and believers that want to see the church thrive. Uh, for uh, in a church for the 21st century context. If you believe that this podcast is for you, please stick with us to the very end, and I'm going to share some amazing ideas for you. Chuck. Yeah, I mentioned this is our third podcast. Now, we won't do this again, but let me kind of recap. You know, mm -hmm. we started talking about why a lot of churches aren't growing. We looked at four reasons why. Mm -hmm. And then we looked at, for us as a church, why we're making a shift from an attractional model church to a missional style model church. The other change we're making is we are moving from a church with small groups to a church of small groups. And we just think that is so vital in the new world that we're living in today. It was not long ago uh, where you shared with us uh, through our staff meeting here, our, our staff meeting here at church, that you have the desire to make this shift going from a church with small groups to a church of small groups. Can you clarify this a little bit and then, and then share with them what this means for you? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, Felipe, whenever we were shut down because of the pandemic, mm -hmm. you and Craig and the team did an incredible job oh, of getting okay. us online. Yeah. And we were producing content five days a week along with the weekend message. That's right. And uh, But the problem we discovered in that was, man, that's just one way. It's communication going out. But as a pastor, I had really no clue how a lot of our church was doing in a very um, tumultuous time. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't long until I figured out there are a lot of adults in the church. I knew exactly how they were doing because they were in a small group. And our small groups went um, from meeting in person to going on Zoom. But what made that powerful is the Zoom was interactive. So they could continue to share with each other, mm. pray for one another, find out what's going on in each other's lives, yeah. uh, encourage one another. And I realized, man, that really is the life of the church. In fact, much of what we need to do as a church cannot be done in a worship experience in context, but it can be done in a small group. Think about this. Whenever we worship, we worship together. Um, when I preach, I basically preach to educate and motivate, mm -hmm. right? But the difference is when you're in a small group, you can actually study God's word and you can build into each other's lives. And to understand that, there's two forms of education that we do as a church. The first, we would consider it a, kind of the Greek mindset, that one person stands up, the people sit in rows, and they teach. Mm -hmm. So think of Socrates. Think of the Greek philosophers. I can, right? I can, I can picture them. Yeah. yeah. But that's not how Jesus did it, hmm. right? I mean, he had the crowds, but Jesus taught and discipled in a small group. That's true. And the Hebraic model, which basically followed the rabbi model, was that you would sit in circles and discuss. And so another thing we realized not long after the shutdown was, man, our people weren't as spiritually mature, all of them, as we thought they were. That discipleship really needed to be ramped up because we had people. And to really understand why the small group model is so important, mm -hmm. we have to think about two different forms of education. The Greek model is where one person stands up and they speak to the crowds and the crowds sit in rows and think about Socrates or think about the great philosophers, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that's how they taught. Well, that's what we do basically in Sunday morning worship, but that's not how Jesus talk, taught. Huh. And that's really not the way the rabbis taught in Jesus' day. The Hebraic model, they sat in circles and they discussed. And so 
so that's where real discipleship happens. You've got to be able to ask questions. You've got to be able to interact for discipleship to happen. Uh, we say it best this way, life change happens in the context of relationships. Wow. And so we really saw that uh, making the shift to a missional model also meant that um, our small group ministry would be the place where discipleship would happen, be the place where where caring and loving each other people you know happens uh where community is built and um where people study together but here's another point it really has become our new front door yeah. it's a ministry oppor- not only ministry opportunity but an outreach opportunity mm-hmm. let's be honest uh, not a lot of people in our culture who are unchurched wake up on sunday morning and say i think i'll find a church today no. right yeah and so our um, statement is engagement must happen before attendance. Yeah. So, so how does that work out? Well, if uh, I'm in a small group and we're about to do a study on parenting teenagers, hmm. well, I can invite other parents. couples, yeah, well, other yeah. parents yeah. who have teenagers. They want to come and find out a better way to take care, you know, to lead teenagers. Mm-hmm. And in that context, we can do evangelism, we can do outreach, we can do ministry, and th- they they become a part of the church through the small group and then make it to a worship service, right? Wow. Now, you teach a small group. I do. I do I do lead a small group now, and it's something amazing to so us. So tell us some of the dynamics that you see happening in your group. One of the dynamics that I see the most time is how we are learning a new culture here in America. My small group is is partially made of people that is Brazilian. Oh, um, you mean you're not from Savannah, Georgia? I'm not from Savannah, <laughs> yeah, Georgia. Right. A year, I'm not from Savannah. Yeah. No, I'm from Brazil. This is, you know, sometimes people see me stumbling about, you know, some words because English is my second language. I'm, you know, I'm getting there. I'm learning Chinese now. So <laughs> okay. <it. laughs> so, but one of the things like, that we have is, is so natural now. And we are going through Rooted um, with them. I have done this before with our staff. And I saw so much amazing things in there that I can, this is so nice. And we can put this group together and spend some time um, studying Rooted. And the question that comes up and all the things that we share together, like the struggles, because we move into a different country with barely knowing the language. And yeah. and it's amazing. The dynamic we have, we sit in the, in the living room and then... Uh, the lights are nice, um, and then the, the, there's the dog running around, <laughs> yeah. you know. It's real natural. It's supernatural. Nobody feels uh, um, a, a corner to do anything. That's right. And you have shared experience together. We do. Right? We so do. you're helping each other not only navigate a move to the States, but then uh, to encourage each other and 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 put that piece of it, man, here's how God's going to help us through this. And mm-hmm. we're going to pray for each other. We're going to take care, yeah. minister we to su- each we other. We support. We really support each other. And Chuck, what are the changes in the way uh, we do things here at Family Church has changed with the new s- s- structure? Yeah, you know, I would say most people probably in the church, outside of our emphasis on small groups, they really don't see a huge change, but we do internally mm-hmm. because what we measure now has changed, mm. right? Can you share a little bit? Yeah, we, um, we, we elevate small group attendance in priorities really above worship attendance. In fact, it's kind of like, okay, if you're in worship, you're a part of the crowd. Yeah. But if you're in a small group, you're really a part of the church. Mm-hmm. And so as we're sitting here, um, here recently, last week, we had our largest adult small group attendance uh, in the life of the church outside of special studies, like when we did church-wide rooted mm-hmm. and church-wide uh, financial peace, and we did church-wide um, uh, experiencing God. But those church-wide events helped people to understand what could happen in a small group. And we're seeing more and more small groups started and more people joining small groups and attending. And, and, and they, in, what we also have seen is there are more people willing to lead a small group hmm. because the way that we're structured, um, you don't have to be a biblical expert. I was one of them. Right. Yeah. You just, now you, you are 
pretty versed in the Bible. I do, but, I do, I do know a little but bit. But <laughs> you don't have to be a biblical expert yeah. to be to lead a small group, because small groups really is about just leading a discussion. That's right. It feels so light to lead a small group. Yeah. That's it. That, so that was my catch. We have we have um, right now media, mm -hmm. so we have small groups that hit a button, teaching from some of the greatest pastors and teachers in the world. Whenever the video stops, they look at each other and go, "Okay, what do you think?" Mm -hmm. And the discussion begins. Mm -hmm. We also are doing sermon-based small groups. So everybody sat in the service on Sunday. They heard the message. And now there are follow-up questions, and they discuss those questions together. This is cool. Yeah, and we also want to make it as accessible as possible. So uh -huh. we have ongoing groups that meet on campus. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the traditional Sunday school model. We have um, home groups that are ongoing home groups. I'm in a Tuesday night um, group, mm -hmm. and we meet year-round, mm -hmm. right? So, But then we have semester-based groups. We have a semester in the fall, semester in the spring, 13 weeks each, and then a six-week semester in the summertime. And that those are great on-ramps for people who want to just try out a small group. So, um, so let's say we're doing a small group on marriage, and it's a 13-week course. Mm -hmm. Well, anybody can go in and even if you don't connect, you can do it for 13 weeks, right? You can. And then you'll find another group because because one of the biggest fears of people going to a group meeting is what if these people don't like me and what if I don't like them? That's and right. let's just be honest, we're all different, right? That's right. So we want to give those semester based opportunities so people can really shop around mm -hmm. until they find their tribe, the people that they really connect with. Well, we we have been doing we have been making this shift for a couple of to you know a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. And what changes have you seen in the people in the church? Yeah, you know, I had talked about the fact that we knew discipleship needed to ramp up. Mm -hmm. And I think we're seeing that. I think we're seeing people uh, with a deeper spiritual maturity in our church. That's so important. We're seeing um, greater relationships. We're seeing a hunger for truth probably like we've never done before. Some of that is because of what's going on in the culture uh, but some of it is because of of the culture that we're we're building as a church. Uh, we see more people engaged in ministries. So, to answer your question, we we really feel like we're moving in the right direction in all of these areas, and it's exciting to watch. This is amazing. Well, as my final thoughts here, I would like to mention, you know, as a small group leader. For me, it's been a blessing. Mm -hmm. It's been a blessing to my marriage, to my relationship with my wife. We are happy to receive the people at our home because we are also the hosts. Yeah. And for like uh, the past um, Sunday, we uh, uh, Saturday we had our group together and and we, we watch a, a Christian movie. That was cool. So we 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 popped some popcorns, we ate some pizza, we spent some time together. We took we took a break on the on the Bible study just to relax, yeah. you know, laugh a little bit. It was amazing. Yeah. And then, uh, uh, I, you know, I've seen more leaders coming up say, hey, now I want to lead. That's it. That's, that, that's yeah. the only thing that takes. It's easy. Yeah. It's so easier than just like there's no pressure over you. There's nothing. Like you don't have to master the Bible to right. start a small group. Right. And, and for those who are listening to this who are part of Family Church, the month of May is our B team month, right? And uh, where we celebrate all of those who serve uh, God by serving the people in the church. And um, we're going to be recruiting new small group leaders. Awesome. And so I would encourage everybody to really pray because let's face it, everybody already has a small group. Mm -hmm. You have friends. Yeah. They might not go to church here or whatever, but you have friends, neighbors. And uh, just imagine what would happen if another hundred people stepped forward and said, yeah, I'll lead a small group. There, there's a thousand people you're going to reach right there that is. Uh, or even more than that. Yeah. Right. So so we've made we're making this shift. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we'll ever arrive because there's always, you know, we always want to get better at it. Yeah. Uh, but we're already seeing some really good results from this shift. Amazing. So everybody's been waiting to the somebody has to say it. Now is the time. So <laughs> okay. now is the time. Somebody has to say it for this week, Chuck. Yeah. What will be? 
All right, so somebody has to say it. And this really is a literal somebody has to say it. And, <laughs> and it has to do with American Idol. All right? So the singing show. Yeah. Okay. If you watch American Idol and they do the auditions, gotcha. about every fifth or sixth person who's auditioning cannot sing a lick. Oh, man, that's They're true. They're just so terrible. It's hard to even listen to them, right? Uh -huh. So here's what the somebody... Okay. They need somebody in their life who's going to say it, right? Oh, man. They need somebody who can just, whether it's a friend or maybe parents, they need somebody to go to that person and say, hey, Joe, you cannot sing. Man. You can sing. Somebody has to say it. Exactly. Don't embarrass yourself by going <laughs> on the show. Just be, be brave enough to say yeah, it. Yeah, just make sure you can build some solid relationship with people. Well, Maybe through a small group. That's right. <laughs> so, so I don't feel bad that they can't sing because I can't sing. I just feel bad that they don't have a friend who's willing to say it. Just stop them. Like, don't go, that's man. Right. You're going to be ashamed. Don't that's go right. there. All well, right. wrap us up, Felipe. I will do. So thank you for joining us today. If you really found this podcast helpful for you, like, share, comment let us know what you think and there is something really exciting coming up um it's going to be a new podcast called babylon and you can find this through our online community right, let, let me pronounce that babble on, on right ba remember i'm brazilian okay remember <laughs> <laughs> kind of a takeoff of the babylonian b which is uh -huh. a satirical site and this is going to be a fun podcast. It's going to be a fun. And you, you're actually going to be the old man on the podcast. I will be the old guy on the podcast. You've got three younger guys. That's right. And y'all are going to take issues that are going on. We're going to comment everything that's going on on the internet. You're going to comment Dude, on everything We're going to going comment on, on everything. And we're going so to make fun. Every week that we're not on, that podcast will be on. That is correct. So every Thursday, we're dropping a new podcast. Exactly. It's either Babylon or, or Family the Church. Family Church podcast. Exactly, exactly. All right. So thank you for joining us one more time. And see you next time.